Money Can't Buy Love. Part 5. On the fourth day of Alexandra's silence, Victor decided to go to her hostel because now he knew where she lives. He bought a huge bouquet of flowers, dressed up. He had a whole fleet of vehicles, for this meeting he chose a black BMW. Upon arrival there, he was greeted by the commandant, an unpleasant woman at first glance. But he was ready for this obstacle, he took a box of chocolates with him and handed it to her as a bribe. Where are you going, my dear, the woman clucked. Melody, I need Alexandra, can you tell me which room she lives in? What else is Alexandra? Do you know how many of them are there? Victor took his mobile out of his pocket and showed her a photo of the necessary girl. And this Sasha, or what? She lives on the fourth. Thank. Victor was about to go to the stairs, but then he was stopped by the guard, who all this time was sitting in a small room. Where? Stand shouted the grandpa. Victor was not ready for protection. I need to see Alexandra. Sorry, not allowed. Petrovna, call her, tell her that the groom is waiting. No, no, since I can't go there, tell me that the package has arrived. The commandant did just that. The girl was at home, so when she heard that the package had arrived, she was very surprised. After a couple of minutes, she went downstairs. Victor did not fit into the common interior at all. Upon meeting, he immediately handed her a bouquet. The girl embarrassedly took her gift. Is this the package? She asked jokingly. Sorry if you didn't meet your expectations. Sash, let's go to a restaurant? Victor stared into her brown eyes. He did not notice how the guard and the commandant were looking at them. For them, it was like a Russian TV series that is shown on TV. The girl already wanted to refuse Victor's offer because she was not at all ready to go anywhere. There was a bun of hair on her head, she was dressed in pajamas and a robe, and on her feet were slippers in the shape of unicorns. Victor said he would wait for her in the car while she got ready. But he strongly asked not to throw him because he would not go anywhere without her. He waited for her for about 20 minutes. When he saw her at the street door of the hostel, so cute in a soft blue dress that fluttered in the wind, her hair pinned to one side, he was surprised that she had gathered in such a short time. Usually all his former passions gathered for at least an hour and a half. She carefully got into his car and they drove to one of the best restaurants in Moscow. Why didn't you call? He asked sarcastically. I was busy, there was no time. Are you always like this? What is she? So serious. Dinner mistress. He said jokingly. What did you expect? An incomprehensible man writes at night, watches when I work, jumps into a taxi when I drive home. And if you look from the other side? A man in love, trying to deserve attention. He did not have time to finish, Sasha interrupted him. Enamored? Do not make me laugh. And if I'm serious? You seem to be an adult guy, but you fall in love like a schoolboy. You don't know me, I don't know you. They spent the rest of the time on the way to the restaurant in silence. Victor was a little offended by the girl's categorical nature, and Sasha, in turn, remembered the evening when she first saw Victor. Victor did not know that Sasha's friend, also a waiter, had accidentally overheard the conversation with Sergei. He had just gone out for a smoke break when his friends came out to get some air. True, this friend did not convey to Sasha everything as it really was. He said the two had an argument over the girl. Allegedly, Victor should get the attention of the waitress. Victor had no idea how this evening would end. In the restaurant, the atmosphere is slightly dispersed. They discussed some superficial topics. Victor saw that the girl was a little constrained, so he ordered her a glass of red wine, but the girl did not touch him. 
After dinner, Victor wanted to take her to the roof of a tall building, which was his favorite place. He hoped that their Sasha would calm down and relax. And while they were waiting for them to be calculated, he decided to talk to the girl. Sash. He tried to take the girl by the hand, but she abruptly pulled her hand back. Why are you so tense? What do you think I should be? She asked sharply. A question to a question? What's the matter? How did I offend you? What did you expect? What is it? He raised his voice. Suddenly, the girl stood up abruptly, grabbed the glass of wine that Victor had ordered her, and threw it on him. Victor had never expected such a reaction to his question. He looked at her with white eyes, and she continued. Before you argue with your friend about a simpleton, look at yourself, maybe something is wrong with you, since it does not stick to normal ones. She especially emphasized this word with her intonation and facial expressions. Maybe under normal circumstances I would have liked you, but I can't even look at you. Oh, yes, and by the way, I do not drink wine, as a simpleton I can sometimes indulge in a bottle of beer. Goodbye. She turned around and left the restaurant in a hurry. The waitress brought Victor a napkin to dry off. He quickly grabbed her, dabbed his face, threw money on the table, and ran after Sasha. But when he ran out of the restaurant, her trail was gone. He got into his car, not understanding what was happening. In a hurry, he called his friend. Hi, just remembering you, you will live long. Victor heard Sergi's cheerful voice. What did you tell her? Victor shouted into the phone. What are you talking about? Sergi asked in surprise. What did you say to Sasha? What kind of Sasha? What have you gone over? The girl from the restaurant? What the fuck is a dispute? Victor continued to talk with a friend in a raised voice. Either you're completely nuts, or I don't know. I haven't seen your Sasha in the eyes since that evening. Where did she get it from? He didn't have time to finish. What do you want from me now? When you calm down, call. Sergei hung up, leaving Victor alone with his thoughts. He was offended that the girl had behaved like that. He would have sent any other girl long ago and forgot about her, but not Sasha. Victor wanted to explain himself to her, to tell her that all this is not the way she had thought for herself. But when he rushed to her dorm, neither the commandant nor the guard even let him on the threshold of the dorm. Victor was approaching the car, but then he had the feeling that someone was looking at him. When he turned around and ran his gaze through the windows of the dorm, in one of the windows on the fourth floor he saw someone's shadow hiding behind a curtain. Continued follows. Signed so you don't lose the sequel.